The MMA Discussion Podcast brought to you by SportsOfAnarchy.com. Visit our site for all your sporting news and needs. We're also brought to you by our sponsor, SubmissionFC.com. Use the promo code SportsOfAnarchy10 for 10% off your order at SubmissionFC.com for all the best Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gear. We're also brought to you by our sponsor, MMAProfit.com. Uh, play MF- MMA Fantasy for free for the chance to win $100. Visit our site or the link below for more information. We're also available now to view on iTunes and the radio podcast app Stitcher. Available on any and all smartphone devices. Please subscribe as well as give us any ratings, reviews, and comments. The MMA Discussion Podcast, guys. Thank you for joining us again for this uh, preview episode of both the Ultimate Fighter Season 20 finale going down December 12th and the UFC on Fox card going on uh, December 13th. Uh, both had both main cards look amazing. We've had a great season of the Ultimate Fighter. We're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about this humongous Fox card that's going on this Saturday. With me, my co-host only, Chris Pauluka. Say what's up, dude. Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's going to be a very short one. We're just going to go ahead and preview these cards, but they're awesome cards. Let everybody know what's going down. We'll start off with the card going on tomorrow night, the Ultimate Fighter Season 20 finale card. We have our two women that will be competing for the UFC 115-pound belt, the first ever that will go down in history. Carlos Esparza versus Rose Namajunas. First of all, go ahead and give us your thoughts on this season, what you thought about it, uh, what was your favorite fight, and who do you got in the main event, first of all? All right, so um, the season, it was, it was good for the most part. The fights were pretty good. There was... I mean, at first, I was really excited for it when they introduced the whole tournament system. I thought that was really cool. And it, it kind of dulled out towards the middle. Uh, some of the fights got a little boring. It was too much with the drama and all that. It just felt like the ultimate fighter, which it's just been going on for so long. It just feels like the same thing over and over again. But there were some good fights on this year. Some of them weren't that great. A lot of them went to decision because, as you know, the girls are 115 pounds. They're not going to finish a lot of fights, but there was some good finishes, some good fights. My favorite fight of the season, I I don't know, I can't. I they had that long break, so it kind of I can't remember it that well, like all the fights. But uh, I don't know. My favorite, I I liked a lot of um maybe Rose versus Joanne Calderwood. That was a good one. That was definitely a good one. And yeah, I mean for me, um. The fight started getting better once the sem like the quarterfinals started. Like once it was down to eight, yeah, uh, that's when the fights got really good and the matchups looked really exciting. And I thought there were actually a lot of finishes throughout most of throughout most of these. Like uh, what is it? Rosa Munoz finished all of her fights. Carlos yeah, Barza uh, finished uh, one of her fights. Felice Herrig uh, finished one. Uh, yeah, the finishes started coming a bit more towards the end. Yeah, uh, what is it? Um, Jojo Calderwood finished, I believe. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Yeah, she finished her first fight, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Who did remember. she beat? Tisha Torres, she didn't finish any fights. She doesn't finish fights, generally. Um, forgive me, fans, if I sound a little under the weather. I kind of am. I got a little bit of stuff in nose, but I'll hang in there. <clears throat> um, All right, let's get started with let's this card. Let's get started with this card. We'll, we'll skim through the prelims here. Tisha Torres versus Angela Magana. Now, I guess if anything's going to take up our time in this prelims, it is going to be this weirdo chick, Angela Magana. <laughs> I mean, if anybody's been listening for her definitely a weird one. on social media, she's being weird. She talks a lot of smack to other fighters, to fans. She calls people that don't like her, the fans, uh, peasants. She's now gone to call herself, uh, <laughs> what's her nickname, Chris? Uh, what is it, Your Majesty? I Angela, believe. Your Majesty Magana. Yeah. I, I don't know what's wrong with this girl. She, she <clears throat> her, I'm looking at her Twitter right now. Her header is a uh, collage of Amanda Bind. Amanda Bind? <laughs> yes, Amanda Bind. Oh, dear Christ. What the hell is wrong with this chick? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. She's posted a bunch of naked pictures. She uh, calls people, uh, what the hell, whatever you said she calls them. I don't know. Oh, you're, oh, peasants. Yeah, she calls them peasants. She calls herself your majesty. Oh, I don't know. She's just weird. She, she's so weird. She's, and she and let's not forget. For yeah, let's not forget. This chick's a mom. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. She seems to be doing it for attention. I mean, she has 
I There's guess. There's 2.2 thousand followers on Twitter, and most of those are probably just from the show, so I don't know how well that's working out for her. Yeah, she said that before she even got on the show, she didn't have a Twitter. So, yeah, I think they're all from that. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, she even called into the MMA Hour. She called into Helwani's show, I think, two weeks ago, and then she was just acting really strangely. She said, I don't know, I think it's just all, I think it's fake. I just think it's really bad, a really bad version of what Conor McGregor, and I mean, it's even just a bad version of what Chael Sonnen does, because Chael's... Chael was good at it. Yeah, yeah but Chael, Chael was more of a shtick than Conor. Conor is more like, a, I guess he's more real with what he says, because it seems like that is him, except to a little bit more of a higher degree. With Chael, it was just kind of like a character. Yeah, and what she's doing, she's doing like, it seems like a pro wrestling segment, like the first time any one-timer does a pro wrestling segment, but like five times worse than that. That's how bad it was. If anybody listened to the fan questions uh, segment of the MMA Hour, not this past week, but the week prior, it was just so weird. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely weird. It was the oddest thing ever. That's, and um, That's the only way to describe it. Yeah, it was very odd. The Ariel Hawani did a, uh, I, th- I thought, you know, stuck it to her. Not in the yeah. sense like he was being no, he mean or rude, did. but he was being real. He wasn't he wasn't yeah. being he wasn't like, okay, this is not Yeah, I mean, he wasn't he was like, letting her really just keep bullshitting people. Yeah, and it's just silly. It was so silly. It's not even it's not even fun. Like her her whole thing isn't fun. No, it's like awkward to listen to. It yeah. Really, it's just, it, it, yeah. Like, it doesn't make me feel know. like oh that's awesome like oh I can't wait to see her fight and if anything you just like you're 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 going that you're sitting there going like oh I can't wait to see her get her ass whooped yeah, yeah so I mean in a way maybe it works for her a little bit but I think a lot of people still don't know who the hell she is either way well I mean if you're listening to us and you didn't know who she was and you're finding out about it now and you're looking at her Twitter and now you automatically hate this girl she will be going up against Tisha Torres yeah let's get uh, into that let's talk about the fight what do you a, think. Yeah, <laughs> it's a. I mean, uh, it's a very interesting fight. I I believe that Tisha is probably more well rounded. Angela Magana is great, uh, standing up mostly in the clinch because she's a Thai fighter. She's been training in Thailand the last three or four years, according to her. Um, and so I think that that's where she needs to be careful. Tisha is also very aggressive in the clinch, while not offensively effective. She's very effect, uh, like she's effective there in the sense where she can grapple, take it down, put you to the cage, beat you up there, dirty box. I think uh, so that there that that'll be interesting to see where the fight goes there. But if Tisha can get Angela down, uh, Angela seemed to be okay off her back. She seemed to do all right. Who defeated her first? Uh, Asling Daly, I think. That's right, yeah. And so I remember she went for an arm bar, didn't get it, but it was almost kind of like a referee mistake on uh, uh, on the, on the ref's part, you know. So it, I think it was Herb Dean. Was it? How dare you, Dean? He's had a tough year. <laughs> He's had really had a tough year. This yeah. Year. Um, but uh, it it, it seemed like uh on her back she's very dangerous as well. So Tisha's got to be careful in areas where she generally is in the guard and in the clinch. Uh, her stand-up seems to have gotten better in the house, though, so we we don't know. I think uh, I think Tisha might be able to squeeze this out for decision, though, because she's generally good at being able to get out of the way of real danger. Like, uh, she's never been finished, and that's for a good reason, because it's really hard for any fighter to really, you know, find a, a real weak point other than maybe sometimes in the grappling department, but that's in strictly wrestling, maybe. And she's a wrestler in herself, so you have to be really skilled in that in that area. To, to, to really beat her, such as Carla Esparza. Um, so I think that Tisha will cleanly take the decision here uh, against Angela. And uh, I think maybe if there would to be a finish, it would be by Angela in the, maybe the later rounds because Tisha, cardio-wise, uh, seemed a little off. I don't know if that's uh, just me, but what do you think, Chris? Uh, that could be a product of the ultimate fighter. I do agree with you. I think Tisha's going to come out with the decision. Um. To be honest, I really uh, – before the Ultimate Fighter, I probably only watched Tisha fight once. I think I watched her fight with Felice Herrig, and I watched – I have I never watched Magana fight. So you probably are a little bit more knowledgeable when it comes to the 115-pounders with the women. Uh, mm-hmm. But, yeah, I know Tisha, uh, she's, she's good on her feet. She looked pretty good at points against 
Carla Esparza, and she obviously made her work for the takedown, and she, uh, Carla obviously didn't want to stand with her. Magana probably has some really good kicks. I know she's a high fighter, so, and they're both they're both really small girls. They're both five foot one. I thought Magana was a little bit bigger than that, but uh, according to the UFC, they're both five one. They're really tiny. Maybe Tisha should look to get inside and just try to use her hands, not let Magana kick as much, and go for the takedowns when she does throw the kick, and just try to mix things up a little bit. I think she'll probably get the win by decision. Though, I agree. All right, move on to the next one. Jorea Jojo Calderwood, the woman who made it to the top, uh, uh the, the top four. Was she the top four? She was. No, no, she no, was no, no, no. She was made. She made it to the quarterfinals. Lost yeah. there. Uh, to uh the eventual finalist, Rose Namajunas, and she will be fighting Sio Heham. Now, I don't know anything about this chick. Neither do I. Um, so I mean, to be honest, it's it's a tough call. I mean, uh, looking up Joanne, she's still undefeated technically, so because the loss doesn't go towards a record, none do in the Ultimate Fighter. Um, uh, but I mean, she's she's always dangerous. She was ranked number three for a reason. She's one, or, or no, actually, I think she was number two, right? Uh, uh, I don't remember what the ranking was. Yeah, number. Oh yeah, she was number two, right behind Carla, and that's because she's undefeated. She's a a, a great striker. Um, She's generally uh, a, a a very aggressive fighter in the later rounds. So for uh, and just looking at uh, Co's uh, record here, she's uh, very skilled in the in the, in the um, in the submission department. Uh, any finishes she has are, are by submission. She has a lot of decisions though. Most of her fights coming in, in the Jules promotion, which is basically the Pride equivalent of an all women's uh, or or like the Pride equivalent of Invicta because it's all women fight fights yeah. in Japan though strictly. And um so, and she's uh what is she? She's fifteen and five experienced. Yeah. Twenty That's fights experience. coming in here for her. Tw- uh, yeah, coming in here for her twenty first fight. Um so. But yeah, um, all finishes by submission, mostly decisions. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how she fares against the uh, the the Scottish uh, firewood here in Joanne Calderwood. I'm surprised that um, what is it? Oh, I'm not surprised, but you know, I'm definitely uh, interest interested in seeing how any Japanese women fare, especially those that have competed mostly in Japan. Um, so, and she's Korean now that I've, <laughs> me and Chris were debating that. I, I, I can't really see this going any other way than Joanne's. She's very skilled. She's been in the limelight more so, I, I would say mainly, be, uh, in, in high level fights. I, 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 it's hard to really tell if anybody out there has been high level. The no name that she's fought sticks, stands out to me. So I'm just going to go with Joanne with maybe a late, r- late third, third round TKO. I'll go with that. Chris, we got. Well, yeah, I don't know anything about Co Heham, obviously, for obvious reasons. And uh, Joanne's a really good striker. She looked the part in her other fights in the Ultimate Fighter and other fights I've seen her in. I, I yeah, she uh, aside from the fight against Rose, where she just got a little bit outclassed there, she looked good at some points. And it's a hard matchup against Rose, but yeah, she's a really good fighter. Um, I think she's going to take it to C.O. Heham. I don't really – all I know is that a lot of her fights go to decision. I don't know her, her fighting style, so I'm just going to have to go with Joanne for that reason. I think she'll get it done. Maybe she'll get a finish. Maybe she won't, but I think she'll get the job done. All right, we'll move on to the next one. Uh, Beck Rawlings versus Heather Joe Clark. Now, Beck Rawlings is one of my favorite fighters, I'll say this. and She had a tough time on the house, I believe. She's hot. She's hot. <laughs> hmm. Good for you. <laughs> I think Heather's a little prettier, but she's bitchier though, so I don't know. <laughs> Heather? I don't know about that. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I, to each his own, dude. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I mean, Beck is one of my favorite fighters strictly because of her style, but her personality. I like her a lot. She's cool. Heather's my prettier to me, but more of a bitch, so. <laughs> but uh, I got uh, – Heather – I mean, I haven't seen a lot of her fights, honestly. I usually, I've seen a lot of these girls' as fights, but I have not seen a lot of her fights, other than both the Felice losses. Um, and so, Beck, uh, you know, being an extreme competitor the, the, in the sense that she's very aggressive, she comes forward a lot, she definitely can trade with the best of them. Uh, she can take punishment, she's got a hell of a chin um, by her division standards, so... 
I think that no matter what Heather brings to her, that Beck will just uh, run straight through it, and she'll find a, a effective offense on the feet, and we'll – I don't know if she'll finish Heather. Maybe she'll finish Heather. Screw it. I'm going to go for a, a, a second-round TKO by Beck Rawlings. All right. Yeah, I, I agree again with you. I think Beck's going to come away with the win. She, she's tough. I mean, we even saw with the fight with Tisha. She looked pretty decent in that fight. Uh, she fared a lot better than people gave her credit for. She puts her chin down. She moves forward, and she just keeps putting the pressure on. And she has pretty good striking as well. She can find the finish by sub, and... All of her pro wins, she's <coughs> the finish, I believe. Yeah. You know, five of her wins. So, yeah, she's a really good fighter. I think she'll be able to just bring it to Heather. And I don't think Heather will be able to keep up with the pressure she brings. And these girls are both pretty big for the division. They're five, six apiece, both of them. So, it should be a fun <laughs> fight. I think I don't really know much about Heather either. I just saw a lose to police both times as well. And, yeah, I think Beck will come away with the win. All right. And we'll move on to the next fight. Felice. Herrick, one of my favorite fighters uh, in the female division, uh, in one of my favorite female fighters in general, I guess I mean, uh, um, she, uh, versus Lisa Ellis here. And Lisa Ellis lost in the first round. I forget to who. Uh, was it Jessica Penne? It might have been. Yeah, 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 it was. Um, she's um, – yeah, I remember now. Okay, so Felice Herrig, I, I personally think that she's gotten a lot better in her striking, even though she was she started out a kickboxer, had a great kickboxing career before moving on to MMA and has and has done well in trying to really mix up her game. And I think now is the best she's ever been, uh, as far as being able to you know fight off grappling, grapple effectively, uh, and 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 mix it in, uh, complement complement it with her striking. So I think that uh, you know. The best time for her right now is, is is right now to go in there. I think she'll put Lisa Ellis uh, against the cage. I think she'll use effective uh, Muay Thai more so than anything because um, she's been she's been training a lot with uh, with um, with uh, what's their what's the name Team Rufus Sport. She's been there for this camp, uh, so I, I definitely am interested to see how she does learning uh, learning a lot from kickboxing legend like Duke Rufus or Showtime Pettis, or even Sergio, you know, so uh, I think her striking might even be more dangerous in this fight, uh, so I, I see her winning the decision, uh, she doesn't generally finish as often as she should, I think she'll get the decision by uh, putting a beat down on Ellis, what do you got? Yeah, Lisa Ellis in her fight with uh, Jessica Pennick, she just looked like she had no answer, she didn't really look like she wanted to beat her, I'm pretty sure she got stopped by a rear naked choke, um, yeah, I mean, Felice is pretty decent everywhere. She's good at striking. She has some good submissions. And Lisa Ellis, uh, according to her record, all of her finishes have come by submission. She finishes 73% of her fights by submission, and the other 27% went to decision. So if Lisa Ellis wins, it's going to be by a submission, but I don't see her getting past Felice. I think Felice is just going to work her, grind her out against the cage, and probably use her striking to set things up and – Get a, I don't think she's going to get a finish, but she'll probably win the fight by decision. Yeah, and I think, um, <laughs> I don't know if anybody else believes this, but all of the other admins in MMA discussion here, such as Chris, Jonas, Gary, Zach, <laughs> none of them like Felice, so I know they're all rooting for her to get whooped here. But I personally am a big fan, so I hope she gets the win. We'll move on to the main card. Battle of the semi, or battle of the runner-ups here, I guess you could say, as Jessica Panay. Uh, and Random Marcos, the bottom half of that final four, uh, will face off in the opening uh, opening fight of the main card. That's a really good fight, I believe. Random Marcos surprised many people in this in this uh, tournament. She first of all she beat the number three ranked uh, fighter in Tisha Torres and did it really well. She didn't really leave much question to it. It was obvious she won. Um, and then she went on to beat, I believe, uh, Felice Herrig, and then she beat somebody else. No, or was that it? Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, who did she beat in the? I think she did beat someone else, didn't she? I believe so. Oh no, no, she beat Felice in the other round, and then she just lost to Rose. Yeah, I think Felice was the last one she had in the Ultimate Fighter. Got you. Yeah, I mean, uh, but still, two good wins, two big wins. She submitted Felice with this very awkward-looking armbar. Oh, actually, I remember now. She is in side control, kind of got like a crucifix position, but put her arm in between her legs and put pressure on the elbow. Uh, 
and it, it was a very it was actually a very impressive submission. I was uh, impressed with it. And she made a fan out of me in, in this season. She's a very tough, uh, doesn't take any shit. She, uh, you know, uh, was all business while she was there, but didn't, you know, come off with, like, this bitchy attitude either. She made a fan out of me. She was definitely, you know, there to, to for all business, but had a cheerful attitude about it and just didn't take any shit. I was, I, she made a fan of me, so I'm, I'm, in, I'm excited to see her, how she does in the UFC. She's, t she's facing a tough task in Jessica Panay. Randa definitely has more of a wrestling based style or grappling style, I guess you could say. Um, and Panay is really good on the ground, uh, submission wise. Uh, her jujitsu is no, is no, is nothing to mess with. Definitely, no joke. And so, um. I believe that Randa will try to initiate a grappling exchange. I think Panay is better on the feet, so she'll have no choice. And I, I think that if she's not careful, she could get caught up in a submission. So while I would like to see Marcos win, Panay is also a, a, a favorite of mine. While she was at Adam Weight, uh, which is a division below, she moved up a weight class so she could compete in the Ultimate Fighter and in the UFC. So um, I, I believe that. Marcos will find a decision, but if there's any finish here, it'll be late in the fight with Panay by submission. But I'm going to go with, officially with random Marcos by decision. Chris, what do you got? All right, yeah. Um, Coming into the ultimate fight, yeah. I didn't know who random Marcos <clears throat> was at all, as yeah, I'm sure either. most people didn't. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, Jessica's more experienced this I um I think this is gonna be a fun grappling match unless uh Randa gets on top and just tries to smother Jessica. I think she's gonna have a tough time doing that because Jessica's really proactive off her back. She has a good jujitsu game, so I think it'll be a tough time for her to do it. But if she's able to find the takedown, keep Jessica down, she has a good shot. I'm not sure who's better on the feet, so if it gets neutralized a little bit in the grappling, we can find out, and that's probably who's gonna be the winner. Um. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's a tough fight to call because of Randa's wrestling. But I think everywhere else, Jessica edges her out a little bit. So I wouldn't be surprised if she finds a submission off her back or if she's able to just get a decision by getting back to her feet when she gets taken down and using her striking to set things up. I wouldn't be surprised if Randa comes away with the decision, but I'm going to go with Jessica. Yeah, I mean, either one is a good pick. And I would say, as I said before, Panay has the better striking. She's better. She has crisper striking. And when I say that, I mean, like, she's able to, to get in and out, clean, get a clean hit without getting hit back. So it, it, she, uses, she utilizes her jab pretty well, where Randa just goes in and head first and just starts swinging. Yeah, and that was a big mistake, I thought, in the fight with Rose in this last yeah, episode this uh, that aired just yesterday. Um, so. With that, yeah, we'll move on to the next fight. Joe Proctor versus Yancey Medeiros. Um, Joe Proctor, another uh, Ultimate Fighter veteran, versus uh, Yancey Medeiros. Medeiros coming off uh, one of – actually, we've seen four of them, <laughs> four bulldog chokes this year, which is kind of unheard of because you don't really see bulldog chokes too much. Yeah, we saw two in the last event, so yeah. you uh, never know. Yeah, I mean, so we've seen four this year, and one of them was by him against Damon Jackson at UFC 177. Um this past August, so he's very great with submissions. He's a jiu-jitsu expert. Um, I would uh, he's a black belt, but he definitely he generally gets his wins by KO. Um, Strike Force veteran hasn't been in the UFC uh, too long, but uh, definitely an impressive fighter uh, outside of the UFC thus far. So I, I would I would be expecting him to you know go for the it go try and take the fight to the ground proctor is very susceptible there on the ground if you look at his record um i think that yancey will look to strike with him he's a heavy striker he throws heavy hands um but proctor from what i understand about him he's very he's very gritty on the feet meaning that he'll he'll trade a punch to give one or you know he'll trade punches he'll eat one to give one um I got to go with Yancey Medeiros, uh, being that he's fought more experienced comp competition and has beaten some good guys. So I'll go with Yancey Medeiros by decision. Chris, what you got? Yeah, none of these guys have really like stood out to me too much in who they've beaten. I mean, Yancey's had a tough go of it. He lost to Rustam Kabalov by a thumb injury when he was getting suplex. I believe he landed on his hand. I remember um, that, he, yeah. He, he beat Eves Edwards. Uh, but then it got overturned, so it turned into a no contest, and then he lost to Jim Miller. Both uh, Jim and Rustam are in the top 15 now. And then he just came off a win against Damon Jackson, as you said, the bulldog choke. 
So I don't think he's going to uh, – Proctor's a really good submission guy. So if – if the fight goes to the ground, if Proctor's able to get it to the ground, that's where he's going to find a win. And if Yancey keeps on the feet, that's where he's going to find a win. So it just, it's a matter of how it goes. I think Yancey's gritty and able to stuff the takedown, and he's able to keep, he'll be able to keep Proctor from getting him down. And I think he'll probably wind up, yeah, I think he'll come away with, he could probably, I mean, there's always a shot that he finishes this fight on the feet, but I'll, I'll say he wins by decision, but I wouldn't be surprised if he finished on the feet. Yeah, I mean, uh, both guys are generally well rounded. Looking at the records, so yeah, um, I think I think he has he he'll give Proctor more than he can handle on the feet, though. All right, good pick. KJ News versus Darren Crookshank. Now, Darren Crookshank, oh, that's a hell of a fight. That's a good fight. I like that fight. That's, uh, that's Darren, a fun fight. That's just a fun fight. Yeah, because KJ News is barely ever never in an, in an exciting fight you know what i mean he's, he's always out there he always puts on great fights darren crookshank has a style that's just fun to watch you know what i mean yeah uh he he moves around a lot his karate kickboxing style is, is very effective it's helped garnish him a, a good streak going on uh he lost in his last fight i believe to jorge masvidal though so he's been so he's looking uh, to get back on the fight his last fight was a win over anthony and Jukawani and oh that's correct yeah i forgot about that one his biggest win that's come recently was the win over Eric Koch, that head kick win that he got over Definitely, Eric Koch. That I'm was really mind. impressive. That's what set him up for a fight, and he was looking to get into the top 15. Definitely. I mean, so, and KJ Noons, uh, I haven't seen him fight. The last fight I remember is the Sam Stout knockout, but that was a while ago. That can't have been his last fight, was it? Um, I could be wrong. I gotta look yeah, it Noons hasn't fought in a while. That His last fight was the Sam Stout knockout, which was in April. Yeah, yeah, okay, so I'm right. Okay, yeah, and that, that was also on a finale card. Um, yeah, I mean, he's got a good streak going himself. Fight, uh, wins against George Soderopoulos and Sam Stout. Decent name wins. Uh, broke a, a three-fight losing streak, and I'm sure he would like to get a third win here. Uh, against Darren Crookshank, that would be a name to get a win over. So for Darren, I think what he's got to do is keep the fight on the outside, which is best when you're fighting a, a guy who's primarily a boxer. Yes, um, sir. So I would say I would go with Darren Cushant winning this one by knockout, third round. I I, I can I see Darren being too fast, too uh, explosive, and being able to to stun Nunes in the in the later rounds. Actually, no, you know what? I'm gonna change. That. I'm gonna go with a first round knockout by Darren Cushant because I don't think he does too wow. well in the later rounds. Yeah, I'm gonna pull it. I'm gonna go with there. Yeah, first round knockout Darren Cushant against KJ Nunes. Chris, who you got? All right, so. This is good. This would be a really big win for um for Darren Crookshank if he's able to pull it off. Definitely. I mean, when you look at uh, Nunes' record, he did lose three fights in a row. But you have to remember that fight: one was to Josh Thompson by decision, the other was to Cowboy Cerrone by decision, and then he did lose to Ryan Couture in split decision. But that was a close fight. And when you look back at his record. He had some – the guys he's lost to are really good guys. He lost to Jorge Masvidal. He's lost to Nick Diaz, and he beat Nick Diaz back in 2007. So, yeah, I mean, that this was guy's, by a cut, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this guy, he's a good fighter. He has really good striking. He has wins over Sam Stout and George Hunter <laughs> was his last two. Did you say Stam Stout? <laughs> Sam Stout. <laughs> Sam Stout, okay. Sounded like you said Stam Stout. No. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, he's a good fighter, and um, he has good boxing. But as you said, Crookshank's going to want to look stay on the outside, and that suits him perfectly. Nunes isn't a guy who's going to look to take him down or anything like that. And, I mean, Crookshank did struggle a little bit against Masvidal, who is also a boxer. But he did – he landed at the end of that fight, and he almost finished the fight. He came close. So, yeah, I think if Crookshank's able to keep it outside, use his uh, kicking to set things up, I think he'll be able to find a win. But I'm going to say – he gets a decision win because KJ Nunes has a really good chin. He's only been finished once by knockout, and that was a while ago. I, it was in 2007. So I don't. Oh, think to Texas to crazy or to the crazy horse Charles Bennett. Crazy horse, yeah. I remember so, that I mean, one. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, Nunes has fought really good strikers. So I mean, they might not have had the versatile offense of Crookshank, and Crookshank can finish anyone with those kicks, but. I don't think he'll get a finish here. It's always possible, but I think he'll come away with a decision win. All right, but both Kirk Shanks. You know what that? All right. 
Next fight. Next fight. Jeremy Next Stevens fight. versus Charles Oliveira. The oh, co-main event, event of the evening. Yeah, the co-main event of the evening. I'm excited about this one. It's a very interesting challenge for both men. Jeremy Stevens fighting a very well-known jiu-jitsu ace in Charles Oliveira. And Charles Oliveira taking on a very heavy-handed Jeremy Stevens now. Oliveira is one of the sickest guys in his division on the ground. I mean, it's hands down. I think he might be one of the best on the ground in, in jiu-jitsu strictly and the featherweight division. I mean, I can't think of anybody that's better um, jiu-jitsu-wise. So Jeremy Stevens has his hands full here with Charles Oliveira. I think that he would he will obviously look to keep the fight standing, look to explode on the inside, put his hands on him. Uh, and Charles Oliveira is obviously going to have to, to, you know, he's not as fast as Stevens on the feet. I don't believe that he is. Um, I mean, uh, on the feet, he can definitely look to utilize some kicks, maybe pull guard if he needs to. Uh, he would definitely need to grab a hold of Stevens. He's good. He has decent takedowns for a jiu-jitsu guy. So, um, but against a strong guy like Stevens, he might have a, a lot of trouble. Um, but if he can get it to the ground, that's where he's going to, you know, he, he utilizes such good technique where strength doesn't matter too, too often. Um, Especially if he's able to find his back or even get into side control. I think in side control he's very deadly. He's he's definitely threatened with a lot of Kimuras or arm triangles in the past in that position. So I think that uh, if, if Stevens can keep standing, which I think he can, uh, I think Stevens might come away with the decision here. Though. I don't see him. Well, I mean he could finish Oliver. Oliver has been susceptible to knockouts in the past. Uh, I'll go with the second round TKO Jeremy Stevens. Chris, who you got? All right. So I got this from – I'll admit I took this from Misha Tate. I heard her say it. <gasps> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, I like Misha <laughs> Tate. She's cool. What's up? Yeah, no, I heard her say it on – Um, I don't remember. It was on Fox Sports. Um, She said uh, Ch Charles Oliveira has won all six of his fights in the UFC by submission, and they're all different submissions. So this guy's just really well-rounded. He looks yeah. everything. He has a win by Anaconda Choke. He has a win by Calf Slicer, which is everyone's seen that. Um, yeah, he's so basically I mean, the Damian Maya of his division, in my opinion. Yeah, I, the I mean, guy has finishes no everywhere. Better. And if he's able to get this fight on the ground, I don't think he'll be able to get top game because I think uh, Stevens has a good enough defensive wrestling pedigree to keep Oliveira away from getting the takedown. Yeah. But Oliveira's not a guy who really looks for the takedown that much. I think if he winds up on his back, then it could be dangerous for Stevens, but Stevens isn't going to pursue the takedown either, I don't believe. I don't think that's a smart game plan. I think what he's going to do, he's a knockout artist, he's going to look for the knockout, and he has 15 knockouts on his resume, and his striking game's come a long way in recent years, and I think he's going to find the knockout here. I agree with you. I think he's going to find the knockout maybe round two, round three, and I think it'll be impressive. Yeah, actually, um, I, I follow Charles Oliveira. I'm a big fan of very, very great submission guys like Damian Maya and him. Uh, he took Air, Air Frayne Escudero down. He's taken Jim Miller down, believe it or not. He took uh, Jonathan Brookins down once, but then he got up and Jonathan Brookins took him down. And he got an anaconda choke um, off of it. Um, he And uh, I believe he also took Andy Ogle down. Um for multiple rounds until he got the submission in the third round. So, I mean, he's he's actually got really great takedowns and uh he's he's very uh he's even though he doesn't look like a strong guy, he's 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 very savvy yeah. in in finding the right uh the right angle and, and being able to put a guy down on his back. So, yeah, it's uh, always possible that he does get the takedown. I just don't see him really getting it with Stevens. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm just yeah. yeah. I'm just reiterating why I believe that his takedowns are, are, are underrated for sure. We move on to the main event of the evening for the 115-pound strawweight belt, first ever in the UFC inaugural. Yes. <laughs> I'm torn here because I'm a big fan of both women, Carlos Suarez and Rose. And I said at the, beginning of the at the beginning of the season that I was rooting for Rose, Carla, or Felice. And so now two of them are at the top. And so that's in, in where you see my dilemma. Uh, I'm a big fan of both women. Um, so and I, and I thought that those three could make it to the, to the top. And so sure enough, two of the, out of the three have. Um, uh, Rose has exploded this season. I mean, we all knew she was great. I mean that she had that you know she was uh, that she was one of the up and comers to watch out for. That she could definitely you know 
uh, start start a fire here in this tournament. And man, she just blew everything away. The only fighter to to finish all, all their fights in the house in the house, uh, Carla had only one finish, I believe. Going into even the semifinals, nobody had finished all their fights. So Rose, or except Rose. So, man, it just makes me wonder where she's, you know, uh, I, I don't know where she's been trained for this fight other than I think maybe she stayed uh, at the uh, at, at her gym in Denver. Um, what's the name of that gym in Denver, Colorado? Do you remember the name? Oh, Grudge Training Center. There you go. Uh, with Pat Berry and all of them, I think maybe she just stayed close to home here for this one. I'm sure she would want to after having to stay away. She, one of the – one of the more emotionally uh, uh, affected uh, fighters in the house from being away from their families was Rose Namajunas. So I would think maybe she'd just want to stay home for the training camp. And I think that she has a very fair chance here. She's looked a lot more improved. And if you did ask me who would win between a fight between these two women before the ultimate fighter, I would have said Esparza uh, hands down. But now – it just seems like she's improved so drastically that it's such a closer fight than 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 just than initially than I would have initially thought. Now uh, Rose has shown that her submission game is e improving even more. That her striking game is is so much more effective now, and and she's more aggressive. Um, I mean, her fight with uh, Joanne Calderwood definitely showed that she was so aggressive in that fight. She put it to her. She didn't really give Joanne a, 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 any other time in the fight to to really be effective with her striking, and and that's her best game. So, and and I don't believe Carla is that effective of a, of a striker. Her counter striking in this in this past this last episode uh, against Jessica Panay was actually really on point. She landed a lot of good counter strikes. Um, but she was also getting hit a lot as well. So I think that with that, Rose uh, is the better striker. And on the ground, Esparza is the better offensive grappler. I believe that Rose, though, on her back is so dangerous that, man, it just it leaves Carla with very little option here than, other to, than to just maybe lay and pray. <laughs> so I would say that, you know, Rose will find the, the victory here in the very last round. Fifth round, submission, Rose number Nunes. That's my crazy prediction of the day. Chris, who do you got in this awesome main event? All right. So looking at this, Rose is a very well-rounded fighter. She's good oh, on definitely. her feet. She's able to finish girls on her feet. She has a very diverse striking game. She throws weird stuff. She throws like side kicks to the face like she was throwing against up. Uh, Joanne Calderwood, she throws a bunch of different techniques. She throws front and, kicks, yeah. Yeah. And she throws a lot of stuff. And then she's also really good for back. She has a good jiu-jitsu game. And as we saw in the Ultimate Fighter, I think she finished all three of her fights by submission. Yeah. So, and two of them by Kimura from half guard, which really, she locks those things down and they're tight. So but the thing is, she's going to have to be mindful of the takedowns of Carla Esparza. Carla is probably the best wrestler in the division. I would say hands down probably the best wrestler in the division. And Rose is going to have to be wary of that because she doesn't want Carla holding her down for that long. But I think if this fight's on the feet, Rose is going to want to keep it in kicking distance. But she has to, again, be mindful of the takedowns because if her, her leg gets caught, she's probably going to get taken down. And for Carla, she's going to want to find the takedown. She's going to have to use – I think she's going to just have to set it up. She can't be diving on takedowns like she was against uh, Tisha. Because if she does that, she's going to get submitted. Yeah, she was diving on, like, ugly takedowns on Tisha, just leaving her head down, diving at the ankles, and it was really sloppy. I don't know why. But um, in this last fight, she looked a little bit better. Her striking didn't look too bad. If she's able to set up her, she actually uh, was showing an overhand right that looked pretty decent in the fight against uh, Jessica Penney. So if she's able to do that and set that up, make use the overhand right to set up the takedown – she could get it, but at the five-round fight, I'm leaning towards Rose here. I think Rose can either find a submission off her back, or she could just uh, keep Carla at distance and try to just stop, plug away, stop her from getting the takedown, use her kicks and punches from the outside. But she is a bit, a little bit longer. She, yeah, she's she's not much taller. She is a few inches taller than Carla, but she seems really rangy. She's able to use her range well, and I think that's where she'll come out on top. Yeah. Fun fact, if Rose Namajunas wins this fight, she will become the youngest UFC champion in history at the age of only 22. Yeah. So that'd be interesting. That's very interesting. <laughs> uh, 
um, is man. I mean, again, we can't say m- much more about the fight than that. That's the main event. Those are our picks. What's your pick again? Rose via what? Rose. Via what? I don't really know. I, I think it will either be, I, I don't know, I'll say submission. <laughs> Alright. Alright, submission. Mine fifth round submission. It's crazy, but I'm calling it. That's it's gonna be awesome. This fight card uh, looks incredible. These women uh showed such great skill in in, in the house, uh, the majority of them. Uh, I'm excited to see this card just to see them all, see where where they've gotten from since uh leaving the house. And so with that, we'll move on to the next card that we're gonna review here. UFC on Fox 13 going on the next day, um, December 13th. Junior Dos Santos versus Stephen Miocic in the main event. We'll kind of just skim through the prelims here because these are very wild prelims that we have here. The main card looks exciting as all hell. We have Joe Allenberger versus Brian Bar- Barana. Derek Brunson versus Ed Herman. That's a good one. I like that one, actually. Ed Herman's kind of fallen off a little bit, but Der- uh, I find him to be a, a decent test for Derek Brunson and up and comer to see where he, so see where he comes, uh, see where he goes from that fight if he can win it. Um, Jamie Varner versus Drew Dauber. I believe that Drew Dauber is making his debut. I could be wrong. Um, Joe Riggs versus Ben Saunders. Let's talk about that one. That's a good one. Joe Riggs making his UFC return finally, even though he put a bullet in his leg. Coming back against Ben Saunders, who actually recorded the first ever UFC Omoplata victory in the octagon. Um, and is coming over from Bellator, has thus far had a successful year with that submission. What do you think about this fight? I'll let you go first. Ben Saunders, Joe Ricks? Yes. All right. So, yeah, Ben Saunders is good. Off his back, Joe Ricks can get take down he's well rounded everywhere he has pretty good striking um i don't know it's both these guys are, we saw joe riggs he won the bellator fight master show which was kind of we saw him win that and he's just a really experienced guy he also recently shot himself <laughs> yeah That's silly bitch but um, <laughs> yeah i don't know this is gonna really determine where oh the winner of this stands. We're going to determine where both of these guys stand. The winner of this can move on and look to get into the top 15 of the division. Maybe they'll get someone higher ranked in the next fight. But, um, and they're both coming over from Bellator, so it could be interesting. Um, I think that Joe Riggs will come away with a decision, but it's always possible for Ben Saunders to get the win. I mean, it's such a, it's such a close fight, and they're both pretty good everywhere i think joe is a little bit better on the feet and i think if this goes to the ground he'll be able to defend his submission to ben saunders and get back to his feet if he has to so i'll go with joe riggs but uh this is a toss-up uh i believe uh, my personal opinion of this fight i got ben saunders i'm gonna back him i think that he uh uh, is better on the ground here. I think uh, Riggs has always been susceptible to submissions as well, but you never know. I mean, uh, but uh, he has kind of had a career resurgence, I guess, if you can call those wins in Bellator and Fight Master a career resurgence. But um, who knows? I honestly don't think it was smart that he decided to to take a fight uh, two months out from recovering from a gun wound, but a bullet wound, I guess you could say. <laughs> but um. I mean, to each his own. So, but with that, I think that you know it might have hindered his training a little bit in certain ways. And I think Ben Saunders had a uh, had a decent camp. So with that, I'm gonna go with Ben Saunders via submission in round one. <laughs> yeah, I probably should have taken that more into account that he's only had two months off. But Riggs is also a really big guy at 170, so I think that can help him out. Definitely, man. We're talking about a guy who fought at heavyweight at one point. <laughs> yeah, and Saunders doesn't seem like the biggest guy in the division so he well he's pretty tall him. though i mean uh, yeah, he's tall he, that, that definitely helps six him. one for like, welterweight it's pretty tall yeah Riggs is like a really muscular muscular guy yeah. so i think if he has a strength advantage which i think he should that could help him out a lot yeah. for sure um Riggs is also six foot he's not short oh really i thought he was like five ten yeah no he's just he's really muscular though for his height and <sighs> the weight class he cuts a lot of weight though yeah, man, excuse my voice, man. It's just to feel like I'm breaking up because of this stuffy nose. <laughs> um, we'll move on to the, the the one other fight on the prelims that I, that I think 
really ties in with the event going on tomorrow. Claudia Gadella versus uh, Joanna, and let me help you pronounce this, Jedrzejczyk. Um, uh, both both women have uh, – this is a strawweight fight. Remember that, 115. And these women have both already won each fight. Uh, Joanna Jedrzejczyk is actually 7-0 and in the UFC – or in, not in the UFC, in, in her MMA career and and has won her last fight as well as Claudia Gadella, who I believe – is 12 and 0, so both of these women are undefeated. Someone's O's got to go, and this is going to be interesting because both They're women, right. huh? They're right. What? Someone's O's got to go. Yep. <laughs> Silly bitch. <All> right. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me recover from that one. Silly. <laughs> oh man. Someone's O has got to go. You never heard that term before. I mean, I have, but it's just fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, both women are undefeated. It's definitely an interesting fight because with both men, women having a win in the strawweight division already and about to fight a second time in their careers in the UFC would put the winner at 2-0 and in the UFC. Claudia believes that the winner, if if the winner comes out very impressively, could be the, the the next challenger for the winner between Esparza and Naman Nunes, which is interesting in itself uh, and a very interesting fight to watch. Definitely need to tune in for that one to see a possible next contender for the UFC 115 champion that will emerge Friday night. So with that, I will say I don't know much about Jedrzejczyk other than looking at her record. She's uh, it's very well-rounded, I would say. Um, uh, she's got a... a Half of her wins are decisions. The other half are finishes with a, a couple knockouts and a submission. So um, with that, it, it, you got to assume that this will be a very uh, a very close fight, especially considering Claudia Gadella is in, is in the same way, though her ground game is, is her main weapon. She's got six submissions out of her 12 wins, so she uh, she's definitely going to look to take this to the ground, finish it on the ground, whether it be by TKO because she has TKO finishes, but that that have come from ground and pound on the ground. So with that, I gotta say Claudia being the better grappler possibly will look to take this down. We'll get the decision win. And if it's impressive enough to do so, she may get a title shot. So with that, I gotta go with Claudia Gandela. By the way, I gotta believe the UFC does not wanna have to have a chick named Jedrzejczyk headlining a card when you have to pronounce that name. <laughs> The way it's spelled and everything is so difficult. Chris, who do you got? Yeah, I don't even think I could say her last name. So, no. um, yeah, Claudia Gadella and Joanna Jedrzejczyk. I can't say. <laughs> I, I, I won't even try. I just can't. I give up. All right, um, go ahead. Yeah, they're both undefeated. I don't really know much about them to be honest. I've seen. I saw both of their fights in the UFC. Uh, Gadella won her fight by decision, so did uh, Joanna. I'll just go by her first name. And when I look through their records, I don't really see any many notice, noticeable names. I see that um, Gadella did beat Hercia, uh, Hercia Tibercio, who beat Michelle Waterson, and just won the uh, belt over an Invicta. Wow. That is an impressive so, win. I didn't see that. Yeah, that's an impressive win. And I do know a lot of people have been talking about her. They've been talking about both these girls, but a lot more about Gadella. And she does have a really good submission game, so I wouldn't be. I, I think she could get a submission, or it could go to decision. But either way, I see Gadella probably coming out on top. But it could go either way because I really don't know much what I'm talking about when it comes to these two. Yeah, uh, I've seen Gadella fight. Uh, her, her fight in Invicta and in the UFC uh, with uh, judges is a habit. So with that, uh, other than her one, other than her her last victory, so I've only seen her fight once. So with yeah, she's that, she's been all over the place, dude. She's been, she has like a different organization she's fighting for in every single fight. Yeah, I mean, uh, she's definitely a, uh, what is that called? A tra uh, there's a word for that. Like a yeah, person who goes from I, promotion I, to promotion. Um, yeah. but with that being said, I believe that Claudia's uh, will, will be more experienced, has more wins, uh, has a has the more notorious game. With that, I think she'll be able to stifle her on the ground, uh, maybe get a submission or the victory uh, on the ground with the decision. So with that, Claudia Gadella by decision I got. There's one on last the – I'll go ahead. What? On to the main card. On to the main card. Before that, there's also one more fight on the Fox prelims, which uh, which will be on Fox Sports 1. Remember that. Um, John Moraga versus Willie 
Whoop ass gates. <laughs> what are we going backwards now? What are we doing? This isn't backwards. This fight is before the John Moraga Willie Gates fight. I don't know. I'm on UFC.com. I. I'm like on Yellow I'm on MMAfighting.com, so <laughs> that's how they have it. Maybe they messed up. If it's UFC, we'll go with the UFC card though. J just remember that there's John Moraga versus Willie Gates. Willie Gates, I believe, making his debut with one of the coolest nicknames I've ever heard of. <laughs> Whoop ass! <laughs> that is hilarious. So uh, with that, um, we'll move on to the main card. Yes, very, very, very heavy main card. Three heavyweight fights and a lightweight uh, clash that you can't miss. First fight on the main card that it says for me, Gabriel Napal Gonzaga versus Matt Meathead Mitrion. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right, good. Okay. <laughs> I'm a big Napal fan. Uh, I like his style. He's, he's definitely uh, one of my favorites to watch in the octagon no matter what. Most of the time he finishes or gets finished. Uh, the only time I can ever think of that he wasn't was against Brendan Schaub. Uh, and I think Stipe Miocic recently. So, um but Gabriel uh, has taken the year to really tune up his game a little more. I don't know. It might be too late in the game for him for him to really get back on track for a, t a title shot as that's what he's, that's been his main focus in going into this camp um, when I think it should be just mostly about winning this fight. And Matt Mitchell is no joke. He's a, um, uh, he's he's one of the, he's one of the better fighters in the middle tier of that division. You know what I mean? He's also ranked, which is kind of funny, uh, considering he's lost to Brendan Schaub and Brendan Schaub isn't ranked. So, with that to me, uh, with that being said, I think that Gabriel will uh, will have problems with Matt on the ground. I think Matt will be able to be off and uh, good enough on the offense on top. But Matt's been submitted before, so you never know. I mean, but Gabriel's got to really be on point. And as I said, I think he's kind of hitting the twilight of his career. He might not be as reactive. He might not be as quick. He might not even be as technical, uh, in which I think that's a big problem for him going into this fight. <clears throat> so I got to go with Matt Mitrione, and I'm going to go with it by decision this time. I think Gabriel will put up a good enough fight to where he, he lasts the whole fight. Um so I'll go with Matt Mitrione by decision. Your pick, Chris. All right, yeah, so when you knew, when Matt Mitrione goes in there, if you lose to him, yeah, it's going to be by knockout. So I got to take away. I don't think he's going to get the decision. I think he'll probably find the knockout of Gonzaga. And Gonzaga's been knocked out six times in his career, so he's uh, susceptible to it. And I think um, the way this fight's going to play out, uh, Gonzaga, as we know, has really good jiu-jitsu, but... In the heavyweight division, it's hard to like work from the bottom, really. It's hard to find a lot of submissions from there. And I think if Mitrione does get to the fight to the mat, it's gonna be he's going to be on top. But I think Mitrione's just going to go in, look to swarm Gonzaga, use his striking, and he's finished his last two fights by a first-round knockout. And I think this will be similar. I think he'll get in tight with Gonzaga, use his striking, and find a knockout early. All right. With that, we'll move on to the next fight on the card. Oh, another good one. <laughs> one of my favorite yeah. heavyweights in the world of all time, Stefan Struve. And I know that surprises people, but he's one of my favorites. I mean, the guy has displayed more heart than many people ever do their entire careers. Um, in, in his short career, what's f another fun fact for you guys, he's the only fighter in the, U in the UFC heavyweight rankings that's in his 20s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's ridiculous. And uh, a thing I forgot to mention about this main card, it's it's a really good card. Oh, everyone on the card. We'll see if fights are heavyweight fights, but yeah, everyone here is ranked. That's that's impressive. The UFC definitely did a good job making this. What's card. Gonzaga ranked? Uh, Gonzaga is ranked twelfth in the division. So we have twelve going against fourteen, starting and off the card. That's awesome. Green Struve, which is 15. And fifteen. Dos Santos Miocic is two and four, and then uh. Dos Anjos Diaz is 3-14, and 14, but Diaz is much better than 14. Yeah, and the only reason why is because he, he took some he took a lot of time off. Um, so that's why he's ranked so low. They kind of just moved him down throughout time. Um, but uh, as I, I will go into this fight immediately talking about Stefan Struve's return. It's going to hinder him, the fact that he's been gone so long. We don't know if his health issues will be an issue. Um, so... 
with that, I want to go for Stefan Struve. I do. So I will. <laughs> I think that he will be able to find the, the submission victory here. I think Overeem will underestimate him on the ground. I think that's where the fight will find itself. I think uh, Overeem, I don't see Struve knocking him out per se. I mean, it's possible. Struve has knocked out guys on the feet before. Um, I just think Overeem makes the mistake of taking it to the ground and Struve finding a submission in the second round. So I will go Stephen Struve, submission, second round. But let's not forget, Overeem is also really good at submissions himself. I would think that also comes with being able to fend him off pretty well. Oh, this, this is a tough one to call, and you know, Overeem's just had mixed results. Stefan has had all this time to really kind of get back into shape and train and and, and work on his game, and uh, he's um he's always been great on the ground, on the feet. He he trains at a great camp, uh, so I think that with that, I think he'll find himself the victory if he just hangs in there. He's definitely going to find himself a, a tough striking battle with him. That being said, I think Struve uh, can hang with the best of them. He's also got a hell of a chin. Um, so I think that Struve will find the victory. Submission round two. Chris, who you got? Yeah, I don't think this is a really good matchup for Stefan Struve. Help. He's not the greatest striker in the division, where Overeem's one of the best strikers in the division. That's debatable. <laughs> That's very debatable. At this point, I think it's debatable. But, you know, you're not, you can't, I'm not saying you're wrong. It's debatable. What about Overeem? About his strike, I don't think his. I think his striking is good, definitely. His offensive striking is definitely some of the best in the division. I think his. I think his clinch striking is some of the best in the division. Yeah, Overeem's a really good striker. He's able to, mm. and I, I think he's going to be able to get inside of Struve. Struve doesn't mm. really use his jab very well, which he should, but he doesn't seem to use it because the guy's humongous. He's what is he seven feet tall? Who Stefan? Yeah, he's exactly yeah. seven feet tall. Seven feet tall. The guy should be using a jab, but he doesn't use a jab. Well, very effectively, at least. I think Overeem's going to be able to get inside. He's going to be able to put him in the clinch, put him against the cage, just use a strike. I don't think he'll make the mistake of taking Stefan down and going into his guard or anything like that. I don't think he's going to make that mistake and wind up getting submitted here. I think he'll find a knockout probably in the first round. He's going to have to work for it, though, and he's going to have to make sure he doesn't get sloppy and get caught because, as we know from Overeem, especially lately, He's been a little bit. He's been getting caught when he's winning fights. He's been getting caught, and he got to be. He has to be wary of that. He has to make sure he defends. And he has to be a little bit more patient when he has a guy rocked. He has to take his time and look for the finish slowly instead of just going out there and and getting knocked out when he's winning a fight. And also, as, as you said, uh, Overeem does have good submission defense. He took down Frank Mir and just beat him up. They didn't really have to worry about much of Mir's submissions. And Mir uh, is very good off the bottom in submissions, he, and he's good off the top. He might be a little bit better off the top, but I think if Overeem does take Struve down, he'll have to be, he has to be worried about the submissions, but I don't think he will get submitted. And I think he'll try to keep this fight on the feet, and he'll find the knockout. Which round? Um, I think round one, but hey. it doesn't really make a difference. You mother... All right, anyway, <laughs> with that being said, Stefan Struve, I'm glad to see him come back. Hopefully he doesn't pass out in the back for this fight. I'm a huge fan. I hope to see him get the win. So I'm a little biased with my pick, I guess you could say. I just believe that him being young, I believe that him you know, having the time off that he's had, I've heard him talk about his training camp, what he's been working on, his strategy, and I believe that he's got the right mentality going into this fight. So I think that's what will find him to win. That's where, where my pick comes from. So the co-main event of the evening. Two lightweights go at it. Rafael Dos Anjos versus Nate Diaz. Now this is an interesting fight. Um, both. My pick for fight of the night. Really? Oh. Well, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I don't see. Uh, definitely possible. It's an exciting fight. Yeah. Definitely. I think that <clears throat> that uh, Nate Diaz having been off for so long might not benefit him in this fight. Rafael Dos Anjos has had a busy year and has gotten to work and, you know, uh, um, has 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 is coming off a, a, a very momentum gaining win in beating uh, Benson Henderson, which is which is uh, definitely interesting considering Benson beat Nate Diaz I believe two years ago. Um. So with that being said, I think that the, uh, that Rafael dos Anjos has better Muay Thai. I think he throws more kicks, uh, more effective kicks. Um, he's definitely better in the clinch. 
Um, he's he's probably the more aggressive striker. While Nate throws volume punches, uh, as we know, they don't the Diaz brothers don't throw with complete, uh, you know, absolute power in their punches. They just punch to land, not to not to knock you out most of the time. Even though that sometimes it, it comes to them. Um, but yeah, I mean, Ben or uh, Rafael dos Anjos with two finishes this year. Um, Coming in, riding high on two on two big wins. Nate Diaz having not I don't has he fought at all this year? I think his last fight was against Gray Maynard in November yeah, last year, was. correct? Yeah, so I mean everything's kind of pointing towards Dos Anjos to win in this fight. I think in the striking department he's gonna be more on point. I think uh, on the ground Nate Diaz has the advantage, uh slightly, because Dos Anjos is a black belt in jiu-jitsu, so but so is Diaz and Diaz is more of an effective black belt on the ground so I think if this goes to the ground Nate Diaz will look to submit more sweep and, and try and uh and try and submit Dos Anjos he could find it on the ground but I don't think yeah, he will so I think that Rafael will win by decision and uh, in getting two out of three rounds that's how I'm calling it Chris your pick all right so obviously uh Dos Anjos is a more versatile fighter he has better takedowns than Nate Diaz obviously <sighs> And he uses his kicks a lot, and he uses uh, different punches, and he's good against the cage. He's good everywhere. He's a very well-rounded fighter, mm -hmm. and he's more versatile than Diaz is. So that could help him, and if he finds a takedown, I think he's just going to he's, he's gonna be able to keep Diaz down for a little bit, and he could look for submissions from there. And I'm not sure who has the advantage in Jiu-Jitsu here because they both have different type of games, and they both are very good at what they do. But, um, yeah, Dos Anjos is going to want to look to get this fight in close. He's not going to want to stay on the outside. He might look for some takedowns. He wants to get it against the cage. He wants to be able to be in striking range. And I think that would help him. But the thing is, Nate Diaz is so effective at keeping guys away with his straight punches. And he's he's good at G I mean, he's a good submission guy. He's able to find submissions everywhere, and he's good off his back. So I wouldn't be too worried if he gets taken down. I think he'll be able to find his way back up because Dos Anjos isn't a primarily a wrestler. He has good takedowns, but I don't think he's going to be able to keep Diaz down if he does get him down. And I, I think I'm going to go with Nate Diaz on this one. I think he'll be able to. Wow. Keep I think he'll be able to keep Dos Anjos on the end of his punches, keep him at bay from getting the takedowns. And yeah, I think he'll find a decision win. It's a three-round fight, so that might play into um, <laughs> that might help Dos Anjos out a little bit considering that uh, Diaz has really good cardio. But, um, yeah, I think I'm going to go with Nate Diaz. I think he'll be able to use his range in this fight. And um, I, um, Dos Anjos, if he does win, he could get a, he could be looking at a title shot soon. So Especially if uh, Khabib isn't healthy enough to get in there. Especially. Yeah, he has a lot riding on this fight, but I think Nate Diaz is going to play spoiler. And I like the Diaz brothers. I think they're funny, actually. I think they're hysterical. Nate Diaz... <laughs> His post-fight interview with Joe Rogan after the Great Maynard fight was classic, and I'm looking forward to seeing another one of those. <laughs> Shout out to my mama. Shout out to Gilbert, the best in the division. We're the tag team champions. I'm hungry. I want to get out of here. <laughs> that was awesome. Stock until nine. What? <laughs> I think I think they're hysterical. And oh, I think they're, right. they're just they're outstanding on the mic, but. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think he'll come away. I think Nate has a good shot at winning this fight. It should be interesting. It could play out in a lot of different ways, but we all know that Nate's going to look to keep those Anjos at bay with his straight punches. Now, let's move on to this main event because I'm really excited to talk about this one. All right, Junior Dos Santos versus Stephen Manchus. Now, I'm excited to see Junior Dos Santos come back, but it's a very – um. <laughs> It's very it's awkward for me just to kind of call this fight mainly because Steve Bay's been so hot and Junior hasn't fought in a year, um, and it's awkward in that you know this is the longest layoff of Dos Santos's career. Steve is on the hottest streak of his career, and yeah. you want to go for one guy, but at the same time another guy has looked so good thus far that you know you wonder okay how how is he gonna look. You know, coming off the rust because for the first time in Dos Santos's career, he's coming off of of that loss uh, again to Cain Velasquez. But it's different this time, considering he's he's taken so much time. He's had some injuries. He's had to heal them. It's it's definitely awkward when it's when it happens to a guy for the first time, and this is the first time it's happened to Dos Santos. So you don't know how he'll react. 
Pat Hill be in there. Um, and Stipe's just looked to that he's he's elevated his level uh, uh, to the next to the next. You know what I mean? So I think that Stipe, the boxing that he has. Let me break this down as best I can. Stipe's boxing is very technical. He goes in, he's out. Um, not not the fastest guy to be doing that, but he's good at it, and 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 sometimes it finds him the knockout. Um, he's very heavy-handed still, and doesn't have to use all of his power, so that's why he's able to find the knockout. He he also utilizes kicks to decent effect, but only more so to for the body or legs. I've never seen him throw like any head kicks or anything around. So. Um, and but neither is Dos Santos, so I don't think neither guy has to work except for when he threw that you know spinning back heel kick against Mark Hunt. I think that's the only time I saw it. Um, oh, he also tried it against Kane, but didn't land it. Um, so with that, I think Dos Santos and and Miocic are primarily boxers. But with Dos Santos's boxing, his boxing is more you know from outer range kind of attacks. Or if or whenever he uses uppercuts, he uses that when he's setting when he's setting them up, he sets them up by using those overhands or outer or you know those outside punches, those hooks, um, you know. And then if if you know if he if you leave the opening there, he'll find that uppercut. He's really good at the really good at that. Um, and so and, and his footwork's a little better than Miocic's because he moves around a little better. Miocic moves in and out better, like forward and back. Dos Santos moves around. He doesn't let himself get cornered too much, um, unless you're fighting Cain Velasquez. That guy just kind of does it to you anyway. <laughs> um, with that being said, I think Miocic has the better wrestling. He's very his wrestling. He can take guys down. He's finished guys on the ground that way um, with his ground and pound before. Um, yeah, he could be probably look to utilize that early on if he had a game plan. I think what it should be is to take Dos Santos down early. Tire him out, maybe, and then get around in, and then as well as then with Dos Santos tired out from one round, freshly try and pick him apart with the with the the hands, and then maybe look for that finish in third or fourth round. Um, unless he's not tired enough, then keep utilizing his wrestling. I think Miocic, but at the same time, Dos Santos is not an easy guy to take down. People think that he is because Cain Velasquez took him down so easily. But if you look at the second fight between Cain Velasquez. And Dos Santos, the very second one that happened at UFC 155, um, Dos Santos stuffed nine of eleven takedowns in the very first round <laughs> because Kane just kept going for him, but he kept stuffing them. It wasn't until after Kane Velasquez dropped him at the very end of that first round that um, that Dos Santos was tired out. He he was you know he got beat up in the, at the very closing seconds of, of that round. And was just left susceptible and tired and, and, and weak to those takedowns. He he was left vulnerable enough to be taken down. So and my Miocic having to find that kind of an opening on him is going to be hard. So I mean, unless his wrestling is top notch and ready to go, he's going to have a hard time utilizing that. But it's a game plan that could work if he's able to get it done. That being said, I I uh, I definitely think that Dos Santos will be able to defend the takedowns. I think that he will be able to uh, keep offensive enough and not and not be picked apart like when Miocic did it to, to uh, Roy Nelson. I think that's the kind of strategy he would look to do if not using his rest, but with wrestling in it. You know what I mean? So with that, I believe Dos Santos finds the victory in the later rounds, third, third round victory by a knockout. Chris, who do you got? <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you again. I do think Junior's going to come away with the win. But you kind of, I mean, I don't have any favorite here, but you kind of just want to see Stipe win this fight because it's been the same at the top of the heavyweight division for so long. We've seen Junior and Kane go at it three times, and Kane's proven to be the better band, and you want to see a changing of the guard here. I want to see a Stipe come out with the win and trying to shake things up at the top of the heavyweight division. It would be really interesting because... If he does win this fight, he would probably get a shot at the winner of Doom versus uh, Kane. And that would really be an interesting fight to see. Just someone else go in there and test one of those guys. Um, as for the fight, these guys... Well, are... you're speaking as if, you know, you think Verdum's going to lose to Kane. How dare you? No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. You, don't, you just said he's going to fight Kane, but you don't... You, no, I you... say he's going to fight the winner of Kane versus... I don't recall hearing that. We're going to play this shit back, all right? <laughs> Go ahead, no, continue. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe I did say it afterwards, but I did say you'll probably fight the winner of the game versus for Doom. I do think Kane's going to win that fight, but um, yeah, I just I want to see a change of the guard. I don't want to see another fight 
uh, Dos Santos fighting for the title again, unless it is against Verdun, because at least that would be something new. But I think Kane is going to win that fight. Now, I'd like to see Stipe fight for a title if he does win this fight. But, uh, yeah, both these guys are the same size, so no one's really physically outmatching the other. They're both uh, six foot six, weighing around 240. So They're both what? Six foot six. Dos Santos is six foot six. What the fuck? Nah, it says Miocic here is six foot four, and I thought Dos Santos was like six three. Well, then the UFC website is bullshit. Well, then, oh, okay. Well, you can't go by the UFC website with their weight and height, man. They they one time said Shane Carter was six five. Oh no, my mistake. Wait, seventy six inches is six four, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> All right, so yeah. They're both six four. They're not. They're both six four. Yeah. That was definitely my mistake. I, I for some reason true. just thought. 76 inches with 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> <laughs> My fault, alright. They're both 6'4". They weigh in around 240, so no one's really going to be physically at match. Um, I think Dos Santos is stronger. He might be, but I don't think that's really going to play too much effect in this fight. When uh, There's very little know, technique at heavyweight, so sometimes it does. I mean, it's not. I don't think he's much stronger, though. I think it's relatively... Similar in their strength. I don't think he's going to overbearingly outpower Miocic. Mm, we'll see. I but think that plays a factor. Just my two cents. But. Strength plays a factor, but I don't think in this typical, in this instance, there's much of a strength difference. All right. But that's, that's relative. So um, going into it a little bit more, I think um, Miocic is going to look for the takedown. And Junior is not easy to take down, as you said before. He's very difficult to take down. Even Kane's had trouble taking him down in the past, but Miocic is going to want to look for it because that's how he's going to win the fight. He's going to, especially in the later rounds, if they get there, if Junior starts getting tired, he's going to want to mix things up, use his boxing a little bit to set up takedowns, but he's not really going to want to stay standing with Junior for too long because Junior's going to find he, he's technical on his feet and he has a lot of power. If he's able to connect with something, it's not good for anyone. As we've seen, he's knocked out Kane. He's knocked out plenty of people. He knocked out Mark Hunt with a spinning hook kick. So this guy can find <laughs> knockout power with anything. So you really just – you don't want to stand up with him for too long. And uh, Miocic does have power, but he doesn't – as it, most people at heavyweight do. But he doesn't have that same kind of one-punch knockout power that Junior has, which probably – he probably has the most one-punch knockout power in the division, maybe outside of Mark Hunt. But he might even have, be more of a – he might even have a bit more knockout power than Hunt does, so you don't really want to stay standing with him. But I don't know; it's really tough. I think uh, Stipe is going to struggle to get the takedown early. He's going to stay standing a little bit longer than he wants to, and possibly get knocked out here. All right, fight fans, that's our picks for UFC on Fox 13 going down December 13th, and tomorrow's fight card for the Ultimate Fighter season 20. We don't have any fan questions for this one, particularly. We will for the next episode, which will be. Possibly Monday or Tuesday coming next week. Uh, recounting the fights. Recounting all the fights, yeah. And uh, if we if we have time, we'll add some fan questions in there. I will be getting them from you guys on the Facebook page, MMA Discussion. Um, please also, again, subscribe on iTunes for uh, our podcast. It's on there. If you're listening to us already on there, you guys are awesome. Same as any fans of ours on Stitcher. Uh, if you don't have the Stitcher app, it's free. Free to download. Uh, and all you got to do is just look for our name, MMA Discussion, no S at the end. Uh, you'll be able to find us uh, pretty easy. We're the only one there. Uh, please like us, listen to us on the go. If you guys would like to listen to us on that, say your drive to work or school or even jiu-jitsu class, you know, we, uh, we appreciate you guys. Uh, thanks again to our sponsors, SubmissionFC.com and MMAProfit.com. Please check out both of those guys. Um, and with that, we'll bid you guys adieu. Enjoy the fights this weekend. It's a power-packed weekend of fights. Uh, I couldn't have been uh, – as, as far as my, my closing thoughts will be on the Ultimate Fighter, uh, I thought it was a great season. The fights were great. Uh, I love, I liked them. Yeah, that, that, that two-week uh, cut from in the middle of the season sucked, and that was mainly because of the 2014 uh, uh, playoffs in, in, in the Major League Baseball. That was why they took the, the time off, which sucked. Uh, maybe it affected it, but I don't think it did. I thought the fights, again, were great. The, a lot of the women came out and surprised me. I became fans of, of, of Randa Marcos and uh, and even Tisha Torres in a way because of their no-nonsense, uh, take-no-bullshit attitudes. I like uh, 
fighters that have that mentality and are able to and are able to you know behave properly <laughs> in which i believe both of them did um Carlos Barza, Rose, and Amon Yunus both had uh, tremendous uh, success in the show, and I'm excited to see that fight. The Ultimate Fighter Season 20 comes to a close yesterday and will finally uh, end completely uh, with this fight card coming out on Friday. Chris, thank you for joining me and in reviewing these fights. Guys, let us know what your picks are in the comments below if that's possible to put. Yeah, or go to. Here from you. I'm sorry? Yeah, we'd love to hear from you guys. We'd love to hear from you guys. Yes, go to Facebook, comment us, comment on the uh, section if you're listening to us on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, we yeah. appreciate you guys listening, subscribing, liking, everything that you guys do. Please write a yeah, review sure if, if possible. Share, share everything around. Every little bit helps and just get it out there a little bit more. Share the iTunes link, share it on Stitcher, do whatever. And on We're a cult. Time. Spread us. We're just get yeah. <laughs> Spread us. <laughs> Spread us like a disease. Yes. We're the Ebola virus of, M of mixed martial arts. <laughs> Get going, guys. We appreciate you. We love you. We'll talk to you guys following the fights. Have a safe weekend, everybody.